Hey everyone, my name is Grant Gurness and I'm an RPA developer with Ashling Partners. Today I wanted to talk about how to use the project notebook within UiPath's Studio X. Studio X is a no-code platform from UiPath for business users to automate tasks. Studio X has many integrations and templates that allow for a wide range of automations. The project notebook is an Excel file that is part of each process within Studio X. The project notebook is used to store certain values that the bot will be using in an automation. Uh, this could be an email address, a file path, dates, and um, other values. Uh, using the project notebook helps to keep projects organized and makes it easier for others to view an update in the future as needed. I've opened up a blank project in Studio X and I'm going to navigate to the project notebook by clicking project notebook and then clicking open project notebook. All right, so we'll see here that it is, that it already has a few tabs that are filled out. These kind of give a good explanation uh, on how to use the project notebook and each of these date date, text, number, file, just give some examples with um, these different types of uh, data. I'm actually gonna start by creating a new tab, titling it settings. And then I'm going to create three columns and I'm going to call them name, value, and then comments. Uh, and I will start with uh, today's date. So I'm going to type in today's date as our field name. The value is going to be a formula in Excel um, where it equals sign today and then left and right parentheses. Uh, in this comments field, you could add additional narrative about what this value represents. Uh, today's date is pretty straightforward, so I don't think that's necessary here. Um, in order for the bot to reference this value here that we've just created, we need to name the range. Um, so I'm, where it says B2, I'm going to highlight that, and then I'm going to call it today's date, uh, consistent with what we have in cell A2. Click enter. And now if we want to uh, save this with control S, we can go back to Studio X and have the bot reference this value that we've just created. So I'm going to use a right line activity uh, the right line activity simply writes what we specify into the output cons console down here. So I'm going to click the plus button, project notebook, look for the tab that we have, and then the value that we have created, which is today's date. And then I'm going to run this automation. And here we see that it returned uh, today's date. Let's take this a step further um, and pretend that we are working on an automation uh, that occurs monthly. It's a monthly reconciliation process where uh, we are performing that reconciliation for the previous month. So in this case, we would be performing the reconciliation for the month of January uh, year 2021. Uh, so we want to find the first and the last day of that month. Let's create a value called period start. And there's actually a formula in this date tab that returns the last or the first day of the previous month. It's this one right here. So I'm just going to copy this over. And we can see that it returned January 1st, 2021. Let's name this period start to match with what we had in column A. And then let's also do this for the last day of the month. So I'm going to call that period end. Go back here. Uh, this cell has the last month's uh, last day of last month. So I'm going to copy that, paste that, and then call this period end consistent with uh, column A as well. And then let's say that during this automation, we send an email with the reconciliation uh, and we want to provide some, like an email message for the user. So let's call this email body. And this will just be a quick narrative that says, 
you know, please see the reconciliation for period starting this date and then ending this date. So I'm going to type in the equal sign and then I'm going to do a quote and start typing our message. Please see the reconciliation starting. And then here, since this is where we need to insert the, um, the period start, I'm going to uh, type in a quote symbol or a quote quotation and then and sign because we are going to concatenate this value and then another and sign because I'm going to type in and ending space and then end quote and then and because here's where we'd want to insert this date and then I'm just going to do another and sign with a, a period in quotes. So we see this uh, didn't quite work as we expected. It looks like um, Excel took the serial numbers from these dates instead of this format like we wanted, uh, which isn't a big deal. Um, so just a quick change. There's a formula called text um, that allows us to change the format that is being used. So if we type in text here and then um, period start and then this format text right here, this would be the uh, format of the date that we wanted. So in quotes, I'm going to type in mm slash dd slash yyyy. Copy that. And then I'm going to do the same for period end. So text, left parentheses, period end, comma, and then the uh, format that we wanted and then uh, close it off in parentheses. Now, if we click enter, now this looks uh, more like we wanted. I'm going to title this email body, save the project notebook, and then I'm going to go back to Studio X, create another right line, and I'm going to reference that email body that we just uh, created. I will run this and we will see that um, the first message that was printed was today's date and then the second one was that was the email body that we created. Another uh, another uh, good good use of the project notebook is for uh, folder and file paths. So I'm going to create an input folder and that'll be, that'll be, um, oh. I'm just gonna call this folder input. I'm going to title this range similarly to what we have here. And then I'm going to create also an output folder. Copy this over and then just change the folder name. And then let's let's say we also wanted to create a uh, dynamic value that we are saving the reconciliation as. Um, so I think so. I think that um, for this value, it makes sense to call it account reconciliation underscore, and then have the the year and the month of the reconciliation. So we could do this by let's first create a formatted date to get that date format that we wanted. Uh, if we use that text formula that we were using earlier, I'm going to select the period start. And then this time I want to use a different format. So I'm going to type in year, 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 and then month, month. So here we can say 2021 and then 01 for the month of January. And then let's concatenate this. Let's create a, uh, I'm going to change this date. And then I'm going to create an output file name. And that's going to say account reconciliation underscore and then an at sign 
and then we'll take this and then we'll do another at sign and concatenate our file extension. So here we have a file name that is dynamic and will will change each month. Let's take this one step further and um, create an output file path. Before I do that, I'm going to change the name of this output file name. There we go. And this output file path would, would basically just con concatenate our output folder and our uh, output file name. So I'm going to say equals this. And, and then we need to do a backslash, and then we can um, concatenate the file name. So here we have our entire, the entire path of um, the hypothetical file that the automation created. And this can be helpful because now we that we have this, we can use this to reference this in automations. So let's say we wanted to send an email. Um, we we can for our attachment here. We could go into this and go into the project notebook and uh, output file path. Now we wouldn't have to specify it. We can just use this value. Um, and then for the body here, we already created a value for that. So we could go into settings and select our email body. We could, you know, create other values as well for who we're sending it to, assuming that it's always the same person uh, that is notified. And uh, we could create a dynamic subject as well. So those are just a few applications of the project notebook within Studio X. As other tabs show, there are other potential uses for this tool as well. The project notebook helps to keep code organized and also makes it easier uh, to make changes and easier for reviewers to understand. Thank you for watching.